What car raises the price point of Scion by thousands, puts Toyota back in the sports car game, and puts Subaru and Toyota in bed? This one, the groundbreaking Scion FRS. Let's drive it and check the tech. Well, here it is, the car that Toyota and Subaru have been introducing for years. I got sick of covering this thing at the auto shows and its constant pre-production unveilings. The Scion FRS is the one Toyota gets in the U.S. And then there's going to be a Subaru BRZ, virtually identical. We'll cover that one separately. The basic concept is the same, though. A compact Supra kind of car, low slung, really a 2 plus 2 two-door. It's meant to be an affordable little pocket rocket like Toyota hasn't made in eons, if ever. Now inside this car, you're going to find what I think is an interesting dose of Nissan GTR, a different company entirely, but it's this real kind of gutsy, almost a throwback retro look. There's some faux carbon fiber here. I hope it's not real, not at this price it couldn't be. And everything in here is very machine-like, very mechanical. It's a nice change of pace from what you'd expect in a low-priced car. As you can see, the display is very minimal. It's a black and white, kind of a you know crunchy segmented character display. So I would recommend an upgrade. If you do that, there's one choice you can go with these guys. It's called the bespoke head unit. It's going to give you a color touch screen. It's going to give you some connectivity. There's also going to be Pandora streaming built in and get this, Twitter and Facebook updates and Yelp access. And that, by the way, is a scorching deal at 845 bucks. You know, it's interesting, this car has one of my biggest gripes of modern vehicles, an overly compressed speedometer. It's the smaller gauge on the left of the big tack right there. It goes up to 160, which I suspect is wishful thinking in this car. But even worse than that, it's not even a full circle gauge. As a result, all the mileage speeds you're ever going to be driving are all wedged in down near the bottom. So the gauge becomes useless. One needle width is almost five miles an hour. Now, we have the base six-speed manual, which makes total sense to me in this car, but you can option this this guy into a six-speed automatic. Now, the Subaru Toyota marriage gets most interesting here under the hood. This, of course, is a Scion product, a Toyota Motor Corporation product. But notice the stamping on the fender well and the sticker in the door jam. Subaru makes this car, and this is a Subaru engine. It's a two-liter flat-four boxer. I mean, who else would make such a thing? You've got 200 horsepower, 151 foot-pounds of torque, numbers that don't look stunning on paper, but adequate. Zero to 60 happens in either 6.2 or 6.4 seconds by most estimates, depending on whether you've got the automatic or the manual, and the weight's a little different. The MPG is real different. 2230 with a manual, 2534 with the automatic. That's a big difference, folks. By the way, this engine uses another recent trend in technology, a hybrid fuel injection system, a combination of sequential port injection, which you see on these runners, and direct injection, depending on what part of the power band it's operating. <laughs> Now, I don't know what the crash safety ratings are on this car. I don't normally delve into that. But I do know this. This is the very best car in the world in which to get a paper cut. Let me show you why. First of all, here in the little folder that holds the owner's manual, there's a first aid kit, very tidy one. Then, here in the trunk, is a mini first aid kit, including tweezers and things for magnifying stuff, compression bandage, and more. And finally, in this briefcase-sized emergency kit, you've got jumper cables, a survival wrap, more medical supplies, a floating flashlight, and a hose clamp. What do they think's going to happen while you're driving this car? Okay, when the FRS is on the road, that's where you realize the formula works. A lightweight car, rear-wheel drive, with the right amount of power, not overwhelming. What I noticed right off the bat is this is one of those few cars you can actually floor frequently and not get in trouble. That's partly because the suspension and chassis handle the power well, and partly because there's not too much power. Now, never mind what you see on paper, there's a broad flat spot from like three to 5,000 RPM, maybe a little bit higher. The power doesn't gag there, but it definitely shaves off a bit. And that's part of what gives this car, I think, a real tractable feel. It's actually a lot of fun, although it's not what a lot of car makers go for these days. Another thing we noticed about the FRS is it's got a real firm mechanical shifter. The clutch effort and take up is just about perfect. I love this clutch. It's about as good as that in a 911, and that's saying something. Now, as much as I love the gearbox in this car, I've got to check out the automatic. 
It's got paddles, as I mentioned. Those can be a gimmick if the transmission isn't as quick as your inputs on the paddles. And the reason I look at that automatic is because they talk about it being quite advanced. And this car is the kind you'll probably have as your only car. As a result, it's nice to have a well-tuned sport automatic, especially with the big MPG bonus you get in this particular installation. Now the car's a little unrefined, let's face it, it's inexpensive and lightweight, so you do get a lot of road noise coming through. The engine noise I like, the road noise I could live with a little less of. It doesn't give you the feeling of quality, which a $24,000 Scion does need to aspire to a little bit. And being a lightweight car with sufficient power and rear wheel drive, it really has true sports car dynamics. That's kind of the long, tedious way of saying you can steer with the accelerator or the steering wheel or both. That's fun. Okay, pricing the FRS is real easy. As a first year car, the options are quite limited. Manual transmission cars, $25,000 delivered. 1100 more for that automatic, which I have to look into. And then $845 for that bespoke high-tech connected head unit. I would definitely do that. All in, this car has got a lot of CNET DNA, but it needs a little more oomph around the mid-RPMs.